All right, hey, so welcome, hi everybody. Hello. We're gonna talk today just about identity and uh, kind of who you are, who I am is what it says at the top. And I wanna give you a little background story before we kind of jump into this, but uh, <coughs> why do you think identity is important? <coughs> Identify who you are and what kind of person people know you as. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? Who you are, what kind of person people know you as? You can't really take a path in life if you don't know who you are. Ooh, wow, look at that. Who you are. We have a winner. No, they're all good. Uh, how other people see you is what you said, Ryan, right? Yes, sir. <clears throat> and uh, choosing a path. And I guess that would be kind of blind. Right? So if you don't know who you are, how are you going to know where you're going? Is that kind of thing. So those are pretty, pretty on the spot concepts. Oh, when, um, you and your personal life, just think of yourself, not as who you are today, but think of yourself as a superhero. So name some, I'll name some superheroes. You tell me their identity. Okay. Uh, Spider-Man. Peter Parker. Peter Parker. So what's the difference between Peter Parker and Spider-Man? Uh, he's a photographer going from place to place doing work ethics and Spider-Man's a hero saving people from burning buildings. Okay, so are they the same people? Yes. yes. But they're not. And so well, Peter Parker doesn't go and save people from burning buildings, does he? How about Batman? Who's yeah. Batman? Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne. What's he do? Logical term is a stalker. Playboy yeah. millionaire. <laughs> millionaire, right? Investor. Millionaire guy does all this stuff, but then what does he do when he's not being a millionaire? His alter ego. Which is? Batman. Batman, and what does he do? So Save by crime. crime, get all that stuff. How about Superman? Clark Kent. Uh-huh. What's he do? Almost like the same thing. He's a reporter now. Newspaper guy, right? And uh, uh, kind of geeky, you know, the whole thing. That's how they portray him, but yet... When he's not doing that, he jumps into the phone booth, whatever, gets his cape on, and he Puts his on yeah, and saves the world. The so almost world. every superhero that you can think of that we kind of identify with has an alter ego or a mask. Right. And there's a reason for that. So they're playing on our deep search for who we are and what we are. And they play the conflict of that because we're doing it every single day. So you guys have some babies in the room, those little babies. They're being shaped into that identity right now. And what we say to them, the things we allow them to do, um, how we teach them and train them is how they're, they're raised and eventually who they become. Okay, so let's flip the script and talk about you guys and just get blatantly real. You grew up in a system. And you didn't always grow up around people that wanted the best for you. And you didn't always grow up with people who thought the best for you, whether that was an educator, a teacher, um, a foster parent, a group home administrator, a social worker, anybody. Right, a sibling, a foster um, brother or sister. It's not the same. It's hard enough growing up in a normal family to get your identity. That's why we, we as a nation and as a people group are in such an identity crisis, right? So I'm not passing any judgment, but it used to be a time in our world where there was a male and a female, and those were how you identified, right? California just passed a law where you can actually put on your birth certificate that you're binary. So the parents aren't choosing what your gender is, even though the plumbing might decide it one way or the other, right? So it used to be that was the thing. Identity also meant, used to be, that we were from the United States of America, and we said the Pledge of Allegiance, and we did this and this and this. Now with the global world, people go everywhere and do everything. There's people from the United States that were born and raised here that are living in other countries. There's people from other countries that have come here and become citizens. There's people all over the world that have all these different identities. And when you get them all into one room, now all of a sudden it's like we really are this melting pot. But what does that do for you when you're trying to figure out who you are and who you're going to be and how the others see you? It, it can. You, you bet it can. Why do we look at our foster care statistics and you have so many people that are homeless, in jail, not working, addicted to drugs, and all these horrible outcomes? Because of, of these things. There's a lack of understanding of who you are. There's a, a lack of understanding of how others see you. And choosing your path, you, you're, you're often doing it blind. So today's talk to me is very serious. And the reason why I, I want to share it with you is 
I've gone through my own identity crisis in the past uh, three years, you know? But as I look through my life, there's all sorts of things I've been. And when you think about that, all those things that we are and what we do and our values and all the things that shape and make us, it really is important for you to think about it now as you're young because you're going to launch out this life of all sorts of stuff. But you can determine it now. You can begin to change your identity by discovering who you are and what you are. Not, not by letting other people determine who you are and what you are. Right? So how many of you got straight A's in school? Okay. Yes, so, so does that mean that you're a perfect person? And 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 uh, no, no. Oh, you doesn't. Likewise, doesn't mean you guys are bad people because you didn't get straight A's. What it means is that we have to understand how that all happened and why we went into that room. If I'm in foster care and I move ten times in four years, how on earth am I going to keep up with the educational system? Everywhere I go, I'm going to have a B for a problem. So guess what's going to happen? I'm going to get a file that marks down that. I'm defensive, or I'm argumentative, or I'm slow, or whatever. It's not that I'm any of those things. It's that by the time I was at this school and I was learning arithmetic, and I moved to this school and they're on history, then I go to this school and they're doing something else. How do you expect me as an eight or nine year old to keep up with all that? Let alone my new set of parents that don't let me touch the cat, or this family that says I can go here, or this family that says I do that, or this family that does this. And it doesn't mean that the whole system's bad. It means that we have to understand, the people in this room have to understand that you need to work on this identity issue. I'm telling you, I struggle with it as a 50 year old person who grew up in a family where I wasn't in the system, but I still have to figure out who I am and what I am. So I can be the best I can be for you guys and my family. So identity is crucial to our success in life. You really have to discover yourself. It's not something we form or create. I could dress up like a cowboy and walk out somewhere and people are gonna say what? Why? No, they're going to say, look at that cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they're going to say. They don't, they don't judge me by, they don't know me. Likewise, I, I could, you know, go down to the park and dress up in a bunch of basketball gear. And they're like, why is that little guy got basketball stuff on? But they're going to identify me as somebody who's trying to be a basketball player. <coughs> right. So you can jump into any identity you want. I could be gothic. I could be a skinhead. I could do what, you guys could do the same thing. You could choose whatever you want to do. But it doesn't mean that you're that person. It doesn't mean that you're Spider-Man. It means you're Peter Parker. It doesn't mean you're Bruce Wayne. It doesn't mean you're any of these superhero things. But what it does mean is that you've got to figure that out. Because you can wear the mask. How many of you have faked it? Be honest. But Faked it. Fake life. You know? Faked any part of it. I ain't gonna lie. I've done that. You, you fake it. We fake it all the time. Right? People fake it in church all the time. People say, oh, I'm not this or this person. But yet... Why are they having so many problems in their life? But when they go to church, they're like, oh, I'm perfect because I've got a Bible and I go every Sunday. Well, then, why is your life a wreck? And why do we know there's stats inside of foster care where people of faith, of any religion, actually harm and hurt children? If their faith is so perfect because their identity's wrong, you can wear a mask, but it plays out. You could tell everybody you're great at driving a car and then wreck getting out of the parking lot because you're horrible. You can fake it. So knowing your identity, who you are, you really need to get to a place where you're coming from a place of strength. If we don't have a good identity, not only does this stuff happen, but the things in our head, we begin to fill up with shame and guilt and regret. And we start to try to be what everybody wants us to be rather than be you. The best version of you is the version of you that's coming out. Not what you're pushed to be, not what you've been shaped and molded to be, but the stuff that's already in you. So, as an example, February 3rd, 2015, three plus years ago, I was in a car accident coming to work, just driving, minding my own business. Guy pulled out in front of me, hit him going 55 miles an hour, sent me through a three-year tailspin, and I'm just coming out. I've got a scar on my neck, had to have my, my um, bones fused together, um, was in pain and in surgery for three years, six different surgeries. So guess what my identity went from? From being a guy that rode bikes and was athletic and did a bunch of stuff to what's my new identity? A patient, right? All I'm doing is going to hospitals and getting surgeries and being cared for. Used to be a guy that could do whatever I wanted to do in my yard, trim a tree, climb a ladder, do what. Went to a patient and was like, oh, be careful, you know, because I have a whole different things going on in my body and who I am and my balance and coordination. 
So here's another one. As you get older, some of you have glasses now. As you get older, you may not have glasses or eyesight. You will start to lose your sight, mm -hmm. right? It's just part of the deal. So I went from being a guy who never needed that to now if I go to a restaurant, I'm the guy that has to like, oh, yeah, what the heck's that say? <laughs> you know, or I'm reading some label and they make the labels tinier and tinier. I don't know what the heck's in any food item now because I can't even see it. So that, that changes your identity. As you age, you're different. As you become a parent, you're different. As you become a wife or a, or a husband or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a worker, you're different. So your identity is constantly in flux. I've been a pastor. I've been known as a party animal. I've been known as crazy. I've been known as smart. I've been known as a writer. I've been known um, as a guy that runs a nonprofit. I've been known as people, somebody who works with people with developmental disabilities. I've been known as a son. I've been known as a father. I've been known as a grandfather. I've been known as an uncle. I've been known as a brother. Inside of my family, I've been known as the baby of the family. In our family, I'm known as the head of the family. Here, I'm the CEO. Other places, I'm just some bonehead friend of someone, right? But what, I've been a soccer player. I've been a bicyclist. So your roles and identity just go like this. And they just swirl. And they swirl depending on what life is throwing at you. But they also swirl on what you're interested in and what you start doing. So right now, part of your identity and role is you're, you're in THP. You may not enjoy that, but it's a great process if you allow it to be. So your identity is something you embrace, but it's also something that you discover. So let's look at this real quick. Big quote on the right. What lies behind <coughs> us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. So that's what we believe for each one of you every single day. Yeah, I, I've talked to some of you and I know there's a past. And I know there's stuff that's gone on. And I know it's jacked up and horrible. But I've also talked to you and I know each one of you have amazing skills, talents, and abilities. And that's what we have to tap into. We can't go back and fix. I can't go back and change the accident. I have to live in this new version of me. This bicep, three inches so smaller than this one. You know, atrophy here and, and my balance. I have to live with that. I can't go back and go, oh, you know, that never happened. No, I've got to change my identity to my surroundings and what's happening. So what lies behind me and what lies before me are tiny compared to what's within me. And that's the same for you. And that's what we wish for you guys. So when we have a big mission statement and vision statement that says restoring lives, transforming generations, that's so each one of you that have a baby or ever make a baby or ever get in a family never experience what you experience. And if that happens, then it's awesome. You're well, your family's well, your generations change. That's the goal. And that can only happen as you take ownership of you and help your identity shape. You're not a victim. You're not chump. You're not a mistake. You're not garbage. You're awesome. You have talents and something to give to the world. So that's what's before you. When we talk about just identity in general, you know, everybody has an ID. That's who you are. When they show pictures of guys that broke into a building, they look for the ID. That's one form of your identity that doesn't change. The form that does change is your character and nature. And you changing it on the script you're playing, right? Right now, you're acting very different than say if you were hanging out with five friends at a club or in somebody's yard. You know? Mm -hmm. Me too. Your mask, your persona, what you're pushing off on people. It's very important that you're aware of that and you know that though, so you can control it. Because we don't wanna be, how many of you have fake and phony friends? That they're one thing one time and then there's something else the next time. You can't count on, right? You don't wanna be that person. So why does it matter? There's a great need for identity, a clearly defined method of who you are. That's what it says here. Because your perceptions are based on how you interact with the world depends on how you think about yourself. If you think of yourself as lame and unworthy of love, what are you gonna collect? Lame and unworthy of that. If you think of yourself as a doormat, what are people gonna do? Step on you. Step on you. So you can't have that identity. You have to flip that. And, and some of that means just changing out and recognizing who you are. So there's some things I'm gonna say from my life that I, I have helped me, and that's my faith. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about my faith, I'm not pushing it on you, but I am saying that it helped me. And every faith out there has a component of it that talks about you being a created being. Even if it's new age or whatever, it doesn't matter. You're part of a bigger system. So if that's the fact, then you have to embrace that 
you're created. And if you're created, then you're created kind of on purpose. All of us in this room have different features, different height, different nationality, different backgrounds. You didn't choose the life that you were coming into, but you can choose what you do with it. So when we look at identity and how it shapes you, it shapes how you also see the world. Do you see people like me as negative coming down on you, teaching you, telling you there's another guy up there telling me how life is supposed to be? Or do you see this as a positive interaction where somebody's trying to engage you to help your life? What I'm saying is, thank you, but what I'm saying is that's your choice. And I can't, you can fake it with me and smile and say, oh, that was really good, and walk out and tell your friend on the phone, man, that's the dumbest thing I've ever been to. These people talk down to me and they think they know everything. That can be what's really happening. Your identity accepts that. Tomorrow I'm going to go to a, a, a session that, you know, I was, as I was thinking about this, I'm going to go learn from someone. Who I'm, this is my mindset, my identity. I'm thinking, why would I go this class? I know more than this lady teaching the class about this. So see, what, what viewpoint am I coming from in my identity when I say that? When I say I'm not going to go to her session because I know more than her. Arrogant. Negativity, arrogance. I'm a know-it-all. Judgment. Judgment. So that's part of my identity that I had to go, wait a minute. You know, that's not me. I'm a lifelong learner. I want to learn. So I have to tell my own little identity crisis. Right here, just think about the cartoon people, right? Remember, here's the little devil that was on Bugs Bunny, and here's the little angel. And he's saying, hit him in the face. He's like, don't hit him. And he's got a harp, and this one's got like a thing jabbing him. I had that little crisis going on me. He's like, don't go to the class. It's a stupid waste of your time. You're smarter than that lady. Uh, she's not going to know anything. You know everything. And over here, it's going, remember you said you're a lifelong learner? That part of your identity means you should go learn something. You can pick something up from this person. You tell other people you can learn from any situation while you're being a hypocrite. And so these little fights happen in your head. Well, your identity, what you choose to do, if you go this way, guess what you're becoming? Judgmental, arrogant, know it all. If you go this way, humble, learner, I want to grow. That's how we have to go into every situation. And that's really what we do. We fight this all the time. And depending on who you're with, if I'm with Kenny and he's living thug life, right? <laughs> and, and we go somewhere, what do I need to do to fit in with Kenny? Be thug life, right? Same thing. And then if I'm hanging out uh, with Edgar and he's like, hey man, let's go um, read a book and talk about poetry. You know, I'm like, oh, let's, I'm not saying that these guys do either one of those things, but I have to go, okay, yeah, let's do that. And I'm a whole different person, right? Who you hang out with shapes your identity even more than what you think about yourself because they're a mirror of what you're looking at. So if I'm hanging out with uh, a guy and all he wants to do is go drink and party and all that stuff, what am I probably going to be doing? Drinking and partying, right? If I'm, if I'm with a guy who's saying, man, let's chase our life goals and, and go to the gym this week. Well, then I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to go to the gym. Whatever you, you take the five people you hang out with the most, that's what your life's going to look like and your identity is going to be. So be careful who you hang out with. Okay? So that's why it matters. The principle down here in the middle of the page, understand your identity shapes your destiny. How you see yourself and how you interact with others in the world will determine your life success. Choosing a path. You don't have to be blind to it. You can be right in the middle of your own destiny shaping. So what makes up our identity? Very easy, man. Your sex, your race, your gender, you know, just religion, nationality. We're all, you know, citizens. We're all people. We're all human beings. We're not monkeys. And, and you know what? No other animal has this weird, freaky thing except us. A dog doesn't wake up and go, hmm, I wonder if I'm a cat today. <laughs> a tulip doesn't grow outside and go, I want to be a rose. A uh, lemon seed doesn't fall on the ground and decide it's going to be an orange. Everything else is shaped in our world and created to be what it is. So guess what? You are too. It's just that we struggle a little bit more with it because of all the outside pressures. What does the media tell you you should be when you look at TV? A model or an actor. Model or an actor. Or a football player or something. Okay. Right. Rockets on it. Yeah. We're always thin. Even the ladies and guys they see on the exercise equipment, they're about as big as your finger. Right? But they make it sound like if you buy this... If you buy this chair and take it home, you can lose 80 pounds. No, the chair's not going to help you lose 80 pounds. It's dedication, waking up every day, eating right, all that. The shake weight. I mean, think about how many ridiculous things the thigh exerciser deal. You know, I mean, all this stupid stuff people have, and society pushes it on you that you need to look like this. Right? 
When you see a beer commercial, what are people doing? Craving your thirst for beer. What are they doing in the commercial? Having fun with friends, hanging out, smiles, right? You never see drunks fighting. <laughs> you never see the end of the night, you know? Yeah, this has been a great party. <laughs> I see it all. You never see that. I mean, no, but you know, that's not the commercial. The commercial doesn't highlight. They highlight what they want you to see. Here's the little thing. Yeah, Even yeah. smoking, right? When we grew up, it was like there was this guy called the Marlboro Man, and he rode a horse, and he was like, you know, a cowboy, and he's just, like, just all yeah, a manly man, right? They don't see him show the picture of him later on in life with a hole in his throat like they do the commercials now. Like, Hello, let's go to NASCAR. Right? I mean, they don't show the negative side of things. They portray what they want you to see so you buy their product. Everybody does it. The clothing, perfume, whatever. So if society's already trying to get in your head, what does that tell you? Big clue, your head is moldable, shapeable. If everybody's saying to you, we want a piece of your money and here's how we're going to get it, buy this car. You'll have this identity. Hey man, get a truck and raise it because you'll be cool. Here's this hat, wear a flat bill, wear it backwards. Here's this team. If you're on uh, the team and if you are living in California and you follow the Dodgers, what gang do you affiliate with? If you follow the Oakland A's, what gang do you affiliate with? I mean, or the Giants. There's all this stuff that people are trying to push your way, what neighborhood you're from. There's people who get shot and stabbed and hurt all around Bakersfield, every single neighborhood, just because of identity of what you wear, right? So let's not act like it's not something that's really going on in society. What I'm talking about is just being all of us mature adults trying to move forward in our life, having a discussion about it, why it matters. You can't change your who you are right now, the, or the big items. But what you can do is change some of the other things. So externally, your work, your grades, your roles, your income, your neighborhood, tall, short, fat, skinny, goth, gangster, country, disabled, dress, how you are in each one of those identity things shapes your world. So let's say everybody in here all of a sudden, I change your identity and I give you a wheelchair. And you are in that wheelchair the rest of your life. How does that shape your view of this building? It can have a different angle on everything, so everything seems out of reach. Everything's out of reach? Is it easy getting in this building? No. No. Well, Would it be easy coming into this room? No. No, it really wouldn't. I mean, we got stuff in the way, and we got a parking space here. But it shapes your, your view, if that's who you are. And part of the, the problem in America right now is nobody wants to take the other person's view or identity. We're struggling to keep our own. So if you're a gun owner, you believe in gun rights, if you're not. If, if you're an African-American person, you, you have a certain set of values and identity that comes into the world. If you're an immigrant, you have a certain set of identities. If you have a family member who's an immigrant, you have a certain set of identities and the way you position yourself in the world. Even if you're a white male, you have a certain identity in this world because of who you are and because of how other people are shaping and seeing you. So it's not like identity is just going with, oh, I'm this person or I'm this person or I'm this person. It's all of us. And it's very important to the life success. So when you look at this second principle down here, know you. You really need to figure out you. This is you, right? That's you. And what happens, happens in here, in your heart, and in here, in your head. And those two things determine what you do with your hands and your feet, and where you're going and where you're not going. So what you put in here, the input into this head is very important. If you're around people who tell you you're stupid, dumb, fat, whatever, change the channel. If you're thinking your heart is negative, wrong, bad, change the channel. You may have some things you need to work out, some issues, just like I showed you with the, the class I'm going to tomorrow. That's a real discussion. But I have to work that out in here. And you know what had to happen? The discussion went like this. My head was saying, you know more than her. You don't need to go to that. My heart's saying, hey, I thought you were a lifelong learner. Well, guess what? This one out. Because this is really who I am. I'm not that guy. But I wanted to be that guy, even by myself. Just in my own little couch, have my own conversation with myself. I wanted to be this guy that was smart and, and better than someone and competitive and all that stuff. I have to realize that in me. So what's your identity? Where do you bring to the table? Know you. That was my little learning moment. Learn about you and how your identity has been shaped. 
What do you like and what do you want to change? So you heard me talk about being uh, in a family of six, being the baby of six, knowing what we know about birth order. That means I'm striving for a piece of the pie. You know, when I eat, I eat like this because I don't want my brothers or sisters taking my food. But it also makes me competitive. That competitive nature can be good as I strive to be better. It can be bad when I let it become arrogance. So you have to be careful with what you have inside of you and that identity and how it shapes you. So what if you're that kind of person who doesn't really care what people think about you? You know you and that's all that matters. Can that be a form of identity? It's like that person really doesn't care about what people think about them. So why am I wasting my time with that? Telling that person that he's stupid or he's mm -hmm. bad. He's not going to care because he doesn't think it. Right. Is that a bad way to look at it? No, 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 no. But I would say that perhaps more than anyone, the person who says they don't care what people think about them, it, 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 it's, just, it's, just, it's a thought cycle that never ends. Yeah. I don't care what people think about you, so why are you talking about it? Because I'm going to be flat out. If people are thinking negative about me, I don't really care about it. I know that they're negative, and yet that's not true. What if they're pushing back on you on something that you need to fix in your life? And then I would listen because it's something that it would help me in the long run. So then you do care what they think. As long as it's not a negative. That's what I'm saying. So it's a, it's a thought cycle that goes like this. So at the core of that is you being okay here. Because if you're okay here and you're saying, I do care what people think as helping me with my life goals. If people are trying to drag me down, you get away from them. That's not saying you don't care about what people think. That's saying that I don't want a negative vibe and negative people that are pushing me down. I don't mind constructive criticism, but I just don't want people being critical of me. So you do care what people think because you understand that they could shape you and help you grow and get better. Make sense? Make perfect sense. Awesome. So I, identity form, how's it formed? It's formed in your interactions with the world, others. So everything that happened to you from zero to now has shaped and formed you. You can't go back and do anything about it, but what you can do is focus on now and out. You can learn more about you, and there's plenty of easy ways to do that. Google, your iPhone, whatever, personality tests. I've got like 10 of them you can take to help you understand a bunch of your core stuff. You can ask friends and family. You can think about some of the things that we have here on, on the bottom of the page, right? In the middle of that page, it says, what's the big deal? The big deal is you're the captain of your own ship. You are in control of you. It's very easy to be a victim. It's very easy to blame. It's very easy to accept guilt and shame that people put on you. It's very easy to say, why me? It's very easy to say a lot of things. They're all excuses. But you're the captain of your own ship. You can change everything that's going on. And this is really a place where you can. You can invest in yourself, in education, in work, in experience, in friendships, and whatever you want to figure out who you are. But you are the captain of your ship. So for us to say, oh, it's not my fault, that's kind of, that's kind of a cop-out. We can change. We can understand that we're people that are growing and moving forward and we're getting better all the time. But it takes self-discovery. There's one tip that I've been doing for a long time, and it's just, it's, it's kind of from a sports analogy. It's called reviewing the tapes. So at the end of the day, you review your tape and say, how'd I do today? And you can actually, if you look at it, you'll see where you're moving in one direction and where you're moving in another direction that's positive or negative. You know, I yelled at this person, I lost my temper. Uh, I, I, I shied away from a conversation because I didn't wanna uh, say the wrong thing or do the wrong, wrong thing. I didn't try something because I was afraid to fail. So you'll, you'll begin to address some of those things in your character. But this middle part of page two, made on purpose for a purpose, and that's what I was telling you about my faith, identity discovery, right? So, if I believe there's a creator, then I believe that I was created for a reason. And there's a reason why I was in the family I'm in, I didn't choose it. There's a reason why I'm as tall as I am. There's a reason why my bones are the size they are. There's a reason why my skin color is the color it is. There's a reason why all the things that have happened to me have happened. But I can sh change the outcome of it, not by changing me. I'm not gonna go, you know, make myself taller. I'm not gonna uh, go do other things to change my eye color or change my face. I'm not gonna do all that stuff. I don't need to. I, I believe I was made exactly the way I was supposed to be made. Now, what I do with that is my choice. How I use my body, my mind, my brain, my eyes is my choice. So there's two scriptures there that I believe 
have helped me. And I'm just sharing this with you from my own perspective. I believe I have a creator, I was created. I believe I'm loved, therefore I'm lovable. So I don't have to come into life thinking, oh, I'm a floor mat or I'm a, I'm a victim. Now I can say, you know what, I've got a purpose. So how do I figure that out? I've taken online tests, personality tests, gift tests, thoughts, my leanings, my choices. And then I wanna share this simple thing with you here, vitals, right? So V is for values. What are your values? Do you value time? Do you value production? Do you value slow pace? Do you value fast pace? Do you value family and friends? Or do you value alone time? What do you value? Your interests, what are you interested in? Do you like baseball? Do you like football? Do you like cooking? Do you like uh, crafts? Do you, what, do you, what are your interests? What, what drives you and moves you? Do you like being creative? What's your temperament? Are you an introvert or extrovert? Do you like being the life of the party or do you like being in the corner of the room? And where are you at on that scale? Do you always give your opinion? Do you never share your opinion? Are you quiet? Are you loud? Around the clock, what are you? Are you a morning person or are you a night person? When is the best time of your day to be productive? And when you understand that, that shapes your identity and who you are. So if you're a morning person, man, you need to be up in the morning handling business. If you're a night person, the last thing you want to do is be up in the morning handling business. But you need to know that. Because if you're going to go and, and, and uh, you know, have, a, have a life partner, and you guys need to understand that I'm a morning person, I'm a night person. You don't want to be having them be a morning person out clanging around the house, banging, and you're, you're just like, what the heck's going on? Is like a fire drill, right? So you need to understand that. Life mission, B-A-T-A-L-S, your vitals. That's your blood, your, your blood pressure, your heart. So round the clock. L, life mission and meaningful goals. So what makes you tick? What makes you happy about being you? Do you like feeding uh, people that are hungry? Do you like helping out elderly people? Do you like being with children? Do you like puppies and rescuing cats? Do you like whatever you like doing? What are your what really makes you feel the most like you and the most successful? Is it when you help a friend out by moving them their furniture? Is it when you call a friend and say, "Hey man, what's going on?" They say, "Hey, I'm having a really hard time with my my spouse and I, I just need to to talk." And you do do you listen? Are you a good listener? You give advice. What do you, what do you really feel that moves you forward? And when you go, man, I feel good about that. That was good. That was a good use of my life. I like when people ask me for advice, and I can be completely honest with them. Be like, this is you know my honest, this is my opinion, but whether you choose to do it, it's completely on you. Yep. It makes me feel good that someone can ask me for advice, and I can do my best to be. That's good. That's you need to know that stuff. And then the last one is S. What are your strengths and talents? So uh, Kenny has a, a great strength. He's very loyal um, and he's faithful. So we had a break in right here before the bars were in, and the windows were gone. And I, I knew I could call Kenny and say, "Hey, man, would you go down to the office?" And and he stayed the night. He slept right here and made sure no bad guys came in. The sheriffs came and we tried to board up the window, but we couldn't get anything done. It was the middle of the night. There's other people I could not call and say that to because they have their own things going on. He was available and loyal and faithful and did it. Okay, that's a strength. Okay, I have strengths, you have strengths. What are they? Ask your friends and start, start working on those. Everybody in this world would tell you, focus on your weakness. No, focus on your strengths. Your weakness will come up, but you're good at certain things. Focus on those things you're good at. So if, if, if you hear us saying, go to school, go to school, go to school, which you don't hear us say, and you're no good at school, then don't go to school. But figure out what you're good at. If you're good at manual labor, then go be a, the best manual labor person you can be. If you're good at being creative, go figure out how to be creative and make money. If you're good with your hands, figure out how to do that. If you're mechanically inclined, go be a mechanic. Whether you're a guy or a girl, doesn't matter. I know I'm not, but you are something. So you have to chase that dream. And you have to know who you are so you can set that pathway. But your heart and your head are gonna indicate that. And that's those vitals, your values, your interests, your temperament, uh, your, your around the clock nature, your life mission, and then your strengths. 
So down there on the bottom, could you please write your name in there? My first job is to be and put your name. Not your name, but actually <laughs> your real name. So it shouldn't read, my first job is to be your name. It should be your name, like Kenny. Yet it's very hard to know myself. I get distracted by the way I wish I were, or the way I assume I am. I lose, lose sight of what's actually true. And that's what we do. And that's when we get in crisis. So what, what I hope we're getting out of today is that we're people in process. Whether you are 18 through 24, or you're, you're, you're 50 through 70, it doesn't matter or you're uh, a baby zero through six, you're in process. Now you as parents help shape that. So if you wake up every day and tell your kid he's stupid and an idiot, what are they probably gonna become? Yeah. A stupid, stupid idiot. idiot. <laughs> okay, if you tell them you, your world's yours, you can make it, you're awesome, and you start calling out their ta talents, oh, I really like the way you helped your brother, that's a beautiful smile, thank you for saying thank you and please and being, they're gonna grow up into that model. So you're shaping them, but remember, you're also being shaped. So be careful who you listen to. Be careful what you watch and what you let in your ears and your eyes. Be careful who you hang out with because they're shaping your identity. And most importantly, discover your own stuff. Figure out who you are. And if you want to talk more about that or you want any tips and tricks on where to go, um, Man, I'll, I'll, I'll push you any online tests. We have stuff here that's fun to do color tests. There's all sorts of things. Um, just, you know, just a couple to name a few that, you know, say that you're a otter or you're a lion or you're a beaver or you're a golden retriever. So an otter is always busy working. A lion's forceful and always wants the way. Uh, you know, the um, or beaver's always working. The otter's one that always wants to play. And the golden retriever's just loyal and doesn't want to bother anybody. I want to take that test. Okay. It's online. I mean, I'll, I'll shoot it all to you guys. Yep. But think about your identity because it's going to shape, as we said here, who you are, how others see you, and choosing your path. And it's not just your dress. It's your internal stuff. It's not just your job, your grades. It's it's your internal stuff. Okay? Good? Um, Thank you for being so attentive. <laughs> Any questions or comments? No. Thank you. That was well spoken. Awesome. Well, go rock your world. Believe in you guys. 100%. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for hanging out and being attentive. Thank you, Randy. Thank you.